Yo, yo boys back with another video today we're going to be doing a solo shuffle guide and i'm actually going to be telling you before we get into the games i'm going to go over this real quick go over the talents go over your basic rotation and then we're going to go into it's going to end up being a 25 minute video at least so um i do have some good games for us to look over and pretty much just have a have a look over the games so pretty much we're going to start with your talents now just go to the description copy my talents so the only thing I switch out of this is if I'm not facing something I can disarm, I'll run maneuverability. What this does is it allows you to get out of any route. As you can see, it adds this. You cannot be rooted while this three seconds is in, and it makes you go faster. But um, yeah, if, if I'm not facing something I can disarm, then I run that. But uh, usually this is my standard PV or honor talents. And then for my one talent here, if I'm facing a sub rogue or anything that can, like an MM hunter, a sub rogue, a wind walker, I'll usually run cheat death. So anytime you face a sub rogue and the reason you run cheat death versus sub rogue is for shadowy duel. Because their whole thing is shadowy duel one shotting you. And this will save you a lot of the times in shadowy duel. But um, yeah, usually this is my standard build right here. That's the talents. Pretty simple. Now for gear. Um, you want to go with as much master as possible. So with my gems, I go 70 mast, 33 verse. And then for my weapon enchant, Sophic devotion, you have waking stats, homebound speed. You have speed for your wrist, for your legs. You have fierce armor kit, planes run a breeze. Now you do want to get this in furious foot wraps. Um, this is uh, really good actually. And then you want to get this ring if possible. Now you also want to get the neck as well. It's called like a, uh, elemental lariat. It's a uh, very very useful. If you can get it, your mastery is gonna be insane. But uh, to, in order to get max item level, you have to have ten of these, and these either come from Mythic sixteen pluses or they come from boxes. But like with with the boxes, they're super RNG whether they drop or not. So I would definitely try to get the neck if you can. It's uh right here. But uh yeah, if you get this max stats, you'll have legit just a bunch of stats, and it's gonna be pretty crazy. But uh, that is basically your gear. There's not much to it. I usually run the uh, badge for the extra damage on my bears or just for the extra stat lines. And then basically just as much master as possible. And that's pretty much it with the gear. Now we're going to go with this uh, little, what you're supposed to be doing in the arena. Now for targets, I know a lot of people ask me, if you ever face an elemental shaman, go the Ellie. So when it comes down to casters, you want to go the person that takes the most damage. So if you realize somebody's just dying the entire game and they're just getting destroyed, go that person. So usually it comes down to Ellie, Ellie Shadow Priest. But uh, yeah, you definitely want to target ele Elemental Shamans. Now as an Assassination Rogue, whoever you guys agree on going is who you're going to go. You can go both targets. Any target can die as Assassination Rogue. So basically what you're doing in your opener is you're going to sap. So you're going to sap the target. And then you're going to grok because you get, you know, improved groats. So you're going to go out, double grow everything you can. It kind of annoys that, you know, this guy's here too. You're going to double groat. And as soon as you get that groat off, so the moment you get all them groats off, you want to instantly kin A. Because the main thing, honestly, even if you kin me first and then groat, that's fine too. You want to get those, you want to get those kinnies off quick. So you're going to sap. Go, you can either Marfadeth Kinney instantly, or you can Groat, and then Kinney, and then Groat the other two targets, or the other one target. And then at that point, you're just starting to do damage. You want to be Kinning off DR. Now, this is going to be pretty much it for Rogue. Now, the, when you want to be death marking, you want to be death marking when their teammate has no... So, let's say you're on somebody. If the healer has no Trinket, that's when you want to death mark. Or, if the person you're going has no trinket you also want to be like smoke bombing and death marking but you definitely don't want to use your death mark in a sense to where they can just not you want them to use a cooldown and not like an evoker like an evoker can obviously just click their dispel but uh you want to get a cooldown at it so if you blind and then death mark they have to trinket and then use their dispel but uh basically rotation get your groats up get your ruptures up make sure you're kinning off dr so the moment that dr is off even if they have cooldowns up unless they're unless they're in earthen or they like just now walled then you can either kidney the other target or you can go and kidney the healer kinning healer is always good especially like if your teammate's doing a lot of damage and the main target's at like 50 percent and the healer has no C cds you can just go up to him gouge him kinny him that's a lot of cc let alone and pretty much that is it. There, that's there's really nothing more. Obviously, you want to be shiving on your kidneys, so pretty much you're just gonna sap. You're you're gonna sap, and then you can either instantly kidney or you can grow. 
Usually, if you're playing a high CR lobby, you'll instantly kidney so they don't stun you before. So I'll sap, I'll jump, mark for death, kidney, groat, groat, rupture, and then start putting my bones up on the, each targets, and then I'll instantly do a full rupture. Now, you also want to be using your blind in the opener as well. So while you're doing this, when your sap's about one second, maybe like, maybe like a little, yeah, about one second away from done, even like even two, as long as you're getting the blind before they get out of it. So let's say they're at about two. Try to get it at one second, but if you know you're going to get stunned, just throw out the blind. So we do that opener. We get the kidney off. We get the groats off. And right before that step ends, we're going to run over there and blind him. And then we're going to keep doing damage. And right there, he's going to trink it. And we know he's going to trink it as well. So you can either go up there and DR gouge him. Or you can use your racial and go up to him and cheap shot him. And then go for another uh, groats on each target again. That's why being a night elf is such a good thing. Not only can you like use stunning at it, but you also get the improved groat damage. So, like I said, just do this. Get your get your bleeds off. Make sure you're double bleeding. You want to be having a full rupture, a full groat. Now, don't focus the secondary target too much. Obviously, you want to get your bleeds up. You want to get your bone dust up, or you you know your uh, bone spikes up. But do not just sit there. Like I I have a bad thing where. I'll start focusing the off target a lot more than the main target, and you can't do that. Like, obviously, if the, if the secondary target is getting low, you could swap them, try to kill them, but if he gets topped off, just instantly swap back to the main target. Make sure you have bleeds on the off target and the main target. And then, really, the only time you want to be bleeding the healer is when he has no cooldowns, or it's like a Fist Weaver or like an Age Power. If they're sitting in your face, and you have no CC, go ahead and just bleed them up. But uh, usually you want to save those gouges for that situation. Or if your teammate, if you see your teammate like AOE him, there's no point in not avoiding him because obviously you're doing cleave damage. So that is pretty much it. I'm making sure I didn't, you know, run, you know, miss anything here. But uh, that is pretty much it. Assassination is not hard. It's very simple. Obviously you want to be sapping off your blind. So let's say you can't get the sap. So if it's like a wrestler druid, you want to, you want to basically throw out your blind instantly. You that's you want to get those blinds out instantly almost every time so let's say it's a wrestler druid i'm going to let's say we open so i'm going to open with uh, gout groats on Eve, everybody i'm going to start bleeding them up the wrestler druid's still not out so we're just bleeding the wrestler druid comes out right so he comes out right now he's over there so we're going to wait for this blind to come up we're going to blind and instantly can he usually i like to mark for death and then what i'll do is i'll go over there blind now step blinding is good too or you could smoke bomb so it's a wrestler druid you know he's good Kenny smoke bomb he's gonna run in and then while he's running in you're gonna blind him so he'll get blinded right right there he'll probably trink it so make sure when you blind somebody just know they're gonna use a cooldown which is usually trinket so he's gonna trink it and while he trinkets and you're in bomb you're just gonna run over and gouge him and that's gonna be a four second gouge right off the bat and then off that if this guy's getting super low go ahead and use your racial usually i don't like using my vanish for you know, that type, type of stuff. Because if you use your Vanish, that's your only cooldown to get away from people. So usually I'll use my Racial and off my Gouge. If he's low, I'll stun him. I'll stun him and then I'll and then I'll Garrote him. Because obviously we don't have any more CC. We might as well get our Groats off. We're going to be triple Garroting at this point. So this guy's still taking Bleed damage. We're going to go Cheap Shot. And then and then we're going to run over. We're going to Gouge him. Or we're going to Garrote him before we run over. So Cheap Shot. Garrote. 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 Rupture. Get him up. And then by the time we get back in, Kenny's off. DR, Kenny, Shiv. And that's for, that's it. That's all there is to it. Now this guy has new trinket. Now you could also kill the druid. So if you have your teammate and you see him that he's starting to swap to this guy, get your bleeds up on the druid. So you got, you're getting your bleeds up here. You have death mark. There's not much these guys can do. This, he has no trinket. You're going to get your full uh, combo points. They're going to Kenny, death mark, Shiv, and then just start pumping him. Make sure you keep him bleeds up, and then you can vanish, cheap shot, and then just kill him. Now, you could also vanish Garot him. So there, instead of replying Garot there, I'd wait for the end of the stun, and then vanish, and then Garot. So then you're getting that extra Garot damage while you're death marking, and then you could cheap shot. But uh, it all depends on, you know, the pace of the game, the rating of the game. But uh, we're going to get into some games here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed me, you know, talking about, you know, over what to do and all that good stuff. But uh, we're going to get into the games, and... I'll meet you guys there. Yo, boys. All right, we're back in the video here. And, yes, this is a high-rating lobby, as you can see. We have, we're facing Crusader. We're facing Naj. We're facing... And the one thing bad about being an assassination is you get hard countered by sub-rogues. 
because it's, it's it's just they have so much more CC than you have. As you can see, we end up getting the racial, and then we end up cheap shotting. So at this point, we do not want to blind yet, because if I blind while he's in the middle here, what's going to happen is, is we're going to AOE him somehow, and then, you know, our Ellie could do it, or anybody else could do it, and it's not going to be a fun time. So all we're doing now is we're just waiting. We're going to wait for that blind, wait for him to be out of pace, and we don't want him to have any cooldowns up. So I gouge him, and then off our gouge, we're going to blind. So we blind him. Thankfully, he dispelled beforehand, which is not the best thing. He actually got a pre-dispel, you could say. So it was an outplay for technically for him, even though, you know, he didn't really, you know, dispel or anything. But, um, yeah, we ended up getting Trinket right there. Insanely good. Now, I do, I did get my uh, bop. So basically, we got a big cooldown off from using our death mark. That's a situation where that's perfect. That's what we want to do. We want to get cooldowns off. So we ended up getting bop. And we're looking pretty good. We still have Trinket. We still have Evasion. Now, I just used Evasion uh, so they couldn't do anything to me. We end up kidding him again. I smoke bomb him. I'm going to gouge the healer. Always try to get those gouges off. Even if you even if you accidentally bullied him, you're still getting that almost two seconds worth of a gouge. So he ends up sacking here. And at this point, we're, we we're going to want to bleed the rogue, especially if we can't catch up to him. So I disarm him because I know he's going to be uh, opening soon. As you can see, the DRs are off on the healer. The DRs are off on me, which means he's going to be... He's definitely going to be stunning right about like now. So in the next, you know, two seconds. So right now he should stun. So I get stunned. I'm surprised he hasn't stunned yet since they, they could have had perfect CC. I guess I don't know what he's waiting for. Now he stuns. Okay, so there it is. So I end up gouging his whole stun there. So I'm stopping his go as much as possible. Basically, every time your healer is stunned, you need to be peeling as a rogue. So here we end up using our... Uh, CDs again, we end up using our trinket, we end up getting another bop. That's the one thing about H files is they have so much utility as an H file. Now their healing isn't the greatest, but their utility wise is absolutely, you know, busted. Two bops, a sack every minute, they have trinket, they have unlimited cooldowns. So here I see that he's uh he's using big dam. I'm gonna disarm him here. And I use a gouge, that's why using those gouges on those healers are really, really crucial. So we get a gouge into a hex, he actually ends up bubbling a two second hex. Which is a terrible bubble, but um, you know, it is what it is. Some you make mistakes. The, even the greatest may, make the mistakes. So here I end up cheap shotting him because I know that my guy's gonna kill their lock right now because he has nothing. So I'm just gonna sit on this H pal. I see that he has no cooldowns left. I think actually I think he had trinket just come up. I'm I think or maybe he just didn't want to use it. And yeah, we end up getting the dub there. Pretty much, I actually think Crusader said something here. He's like, he's like, he's like, do damage or something. I don't know. He said something like that. But um, even though I did a, uh, I almost did top damage. Don't I don't mind myself. But yeah, sub rogues, sub are uh, really in reality in solo shuffle. Sub rogues really do control the bracket. Like if there was one v one bracket, any bracket that you can tell that you know it's not threes. Is a sub rogue gonna be controlling it? Because their amount of CC they have, and they can control the entire lobby. They can stun all of us every single time. So I make sure I, I disarm him so he can't sap off his kidney just in case, even though the Ellie was hitting the H pal. Because they, they can do that. So I end up getting cheap shotted. So do not trink it unless it's Shadowy Duel. Or it's Smoke Bomb, and your healer is nowhere near. Then obviously you have to. But if you. If you do Trinket before Shadowy Duel, you're just going to die in a Shadowy Duel. And there's nothing you can do about it. That's one thing about a Sub Rogue that's... If, if you if you have everything you need for a Sub Rogue... So I ended up trying to sap off the Hajj and it just wouldn't let me. So, y that was very annoying. You know, even... It was supposed to be a 6 second Hajj, but I... Or maybe it's because of the Trinket, that's why. You Okay, that makes sense. Usually, usually you would have been able to, you know, do that. So here I see that he's... Smoke bombing me. They didn't get anything off because he didn't use any CC. He didn't pre kenny the uh, H power or anything, so I didn't drink it. He ends up blinding, so that's a bad blind because he blinds after. It, I don't know. Yeah, that was an awkward blind. I guess he was. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on. So usually you'd blind the H power and then kenny me or stun me, but then he didn't CC the. He I don't. Yeah, I, I don't know. He's now he's playing really like weirdly here, and he and he ended up almost getting like. Uh, I think he ended up going five and one, even though he played. Nowhere near how he usually plays. To be fair, he definitely, I mean, yeah, definitely was not, he was not on his game, this game. But, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, sub rogues are really hard to, uh, 
to manage because they just can kill you any they just have some unlimited cc kinnies and the cheap shots into saps and the hexes like he gets full hex here i think he ends up breaking it and at this point we're not looking the best i, I see earth grab and i end up going to go for a full gouge here i end up getting cheap shot in i'm not going to shrink out unless it's shadowy duel because if i do i'm just going to die and it's not going to be a fun time. I, this is here. So I end up surviving the Shadowy Duel. I absolutely outplay him. So I absolutely outplay and I still died. I ended up, you know, trying to get away. But it was not enough for me to survive. So I ended up actually surviving the the one thing I should never survive. I, that should be un, unsurvivable. And then I end up just dying. With no CC, it didn't matter. My guy did have Bob. So he probably just could have bought me. But um, I, I think I just got 100. I just got 50 owed by the uh, Ellie. So yeah, that that was a very unfortunate. And then here, okay, anytime we're facing, anytime we're playing double rogue, you want to, you can always sap two targets. So here we want to sap the H file, sap the lock, and then open on the LA. I think here for some reason, Naj ended up cheap shotting. I, see, this is this is what I didn't understand. It was looking really good. He saps the H file, I sap the lock, and then we get opening on the LA. But then he randomly cheap shots, like he's trying. He acts like he's a assassination rogue. So he ended up cheap shotting the lock off my sap, or wait, did he? Or maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe he didn't. Maybe I'm wrong. Nope, he did. Yeah. So he ended up cheap shotting the lock for no reason, even though I had a full sap. So that sap was irrelevant. So I ended up just bleeding. I ended up bleeding the warlock because obviously we want to get those bleeds out. And I was I didn't know when Naj was gonna blind or use his CC because usually you know he's gonna kinny and then he's gonna blind. He's gonna use his CC first, so that when he's in shadowy duel, I can spam CC. And that's what ends up happening. So I, I just wait for this guy to you see. I see the kidney. So at this point, I'm pretty sure we ended up getting bubble there for free, which was a terrible bubble because he already had pre sack the ago. So that was a, a very that was again another really bad bubble on, on top of you know sack. I end up see this is where I shouldn't have vanished. I should have knew Naj was gonna go and you know it was it's a bad vanish. I was gonna vanish that, but he ends up sapping. So I end up cheap shotting the warlock. We get more damage here. He ends up getting a good smoke bomb here, so the power is forced to run in here. He ends up using wings. He ends up getting shadowy dueled. I'm going to gouge him into a kidney. So as you can see, the ultimate CC. He has no bubble. Now, he would have had bubble here had he saved it, and then he probably would have lived because he just would have instantly bubbled. But, uh, yeah, he ended up bubbling nothing, so it was this awkward. So here, like I said, you want to be double bleeding, but you want to make sure you're on that main target. So we're going to run Cheat Death versus Sub Rogues. We're going to go on the Ellie. Because anytime an Assassination Rogue faces an Elemental Shaman, you want you counter shaman, Ellie Shamans. Because you they just take a lot of damage and they just can't out heal the dam. So you want to sit on that Ellie. So make sure, you know, you're going to sap. I usually go in here. So as you can see, I go right in. Because I know this guy's going to try to use his root or try to get in combat. He actually ends up getting in combat. Because honestly, I thought my teammates were just in the back. So I was just like... I didn't want to go too far to where he AoE'd me out and then they do exactly this. So I end up having to trinket it. Because had I not trinketed it, because he didn't earth him, he didn't earth him me. So, yeah, that was a, that was like, at this point, he has no, it, we're just not in the best situation right now. It's, I really didn't want to trinket that. I really shouldn't have had to. My guy, I don't even think, or maybe it was CC'd. I don't know. I didn't, I wasn't paying attention, I guess. This guy ends up trinketing walling. That was an awkward wall because we haven't clicked anything. So a really bad wall by the shaman. And then, as you can see, it was a bad trinket by me. I end up pre... And actually, I, I'm just so addicted to using faint that even if I don't have the talent, I still use it. Like, I still click it off CD. Even though it does nothing, I'm pretty sure, if you don't have the talent. Or if you don't, you know, if you're not specced into it. But uh, here, as you can see, we're just pumping. We're just bleeding everything we can. We're, I end up getting a good blind. Now, if you guys didn't know, I don't have a... Key, I don't have, a like, a mouse with keybinds. So I actually have to tab target my targets, and that's why it looks awkward, or, and sometimes I'll randomly accidentally blind the wrong person, because I have to be looking at that person. So here I end up stopping. I almost end up dying. If I didn't have cheat death right there, I would have died. I would have been dead. Because he ended up just, he ended up like 80 owing me in, you know, a stun. He actually just ended up getting, like, the most damn from the LA. Honestly, had he, had he waited for the, uh, I actually ended up getting an insane kick here. I end up trying, and then we just start dying. As you can see, the CC is way too much. You have to play perfectly versus the sub rogue, or else they just destroy you. I mean, the, the amount of CC a sub rogue has is just out of this world. So I end up messing. I don't know what I said. I think versus. I think I said versus sub rogues, we lose. I think that's what I said. 
Because we should never be a sub rogue ever. As a, any rogue that faces another rogue, unless you're fa unless you are a sub rogue, as a restless shaman. Now, if you were an age pal or something like that, or like a priest where you had P double PS, you had dome, you had unlimited shields, or if you rested druid and you had hots, it's way different. But with this comp, the shaman has trinket and then nothing. Even with an age pile, the amount of healing that you don't have is pretty crazy. But uh, thankfully, versus rogues, age piles counter sub rogues. And I mean that in utility wise, obviously, it, that's just how it goes. Age piles usually always counter rogues because of how much utility they have. So they end up going on my age pile here. I'm sitting, I end up getting out of the route, disarming him on his kidney so he doesn't, that he doesn't swap to my alley with a blind. Because theoretically, here he's going to blind my age pile right about now. As soon as he gets out of mid, and then he's going to blind him, and then either stun me or stun the uh, LA. So we'll see what happens. He ends up hexing me for some reason. He ends up sacking, so he can't blind the healer yet. So out of that sack, I assume he's either going to kidney or he's going to blind. So another bad a bad smoke bomb, which was a good smoke bomb, except they didn't use blind. I don't, Or maybe he doesn't have it, actually. Maybe I'm tripping. Yeah, he doesn't even have it. That's my bad. Okay. There he should have kidneyed the age pal. And... You always want CC. I don't, I don't even remember when he used blind. I'm not going to lie. But um, I guess uh, Crusader must have trinketed before I even saw. So as you can see, we're kidding off CD. Like I said, you want to also be double bleeding, but don't like... Don't go out of your way 24-7 to do it. Like, get your bleeds up, but you never want to sit on that one target. You always want to go back to the main target. Because if you sit on that target too long, you're just going to die before you win. So here we're just double, we're just keeping the bleeds up. I actually end up missing kick there, which is a uh, sketchy ante. I end up, I end up needing, I'm going to kidney him here any second though. So I kidney him right off DR about two seconds ahead. He ends up using spirit link. We end up killing the spirit link. And at this point, they end up getting a really good go here. Now, I think I end up holding here because I see that I should be all right. And I have cheat death still, so I should be generally okay. So I see that he gets sap, which was an insane sap off the fear. So yeah, that was a uh, that was pretty pretty insane of a sap. And had he not gotten that sap, we probably would have won. But yeah, he, he ended up getting an insane sap there. So here, pretty much same thing. We sap the wrestle shaman, we sap the lock, and then we open on the Ellie, both of us. So we two, we basically three v one one target, and then he can blind off the sap. Pretty much, that's it. So, N Crusader has a good idea of me me kinning the Ellie and he can ease the log. Naj did not listen at all. It was the funniest thing. Because he ends up just doing his own thing. So here, you'd expect, okay, so we get the set. And then he cheap shots again, which is awkward. I don't know. I don't know if he, he must have been drinking. Let's be honest. There's no way. Because why would you cheap shot off? Well, it doesn't make sense to me. There's no situation where you cheap shot there. Maybe for me to for me to group. Maybe that, that maybe he's looking out for me. Even though you know getting you know getting a gro double groat's good, but getting a double sap is even better. So here he's already used. Or actually, he hasn't used his blind. The shaman's already trinketed without us having to use blind yet. So we get a full blind here. I end up having to evade and cloak the pets because I'm taking on healable them. He ends up using his racial without me death marking yet, so that's very good. So at this point, all we're going to do is we're going to death mark, and we're going to basically blind the shaman. So here I could have waited to death mark until the shaman was in a blind, which is kind of awkward, but I feel like we would have died. I was like, yo, I have, I have vanish left, but like after that, I'm going to be toaster oven. So here I end up getting a full blind, and then I can vanish and sap. We'll see what happens. So I vanish, sap, so a full sap. And we should win here. I don't know how he's even alive. I thought my guy would just shadowy duel and we'd win, but he never shadowy dueled, or maybe he did. I, I usually when usually when I face a rogue, they end up shadowy dueling and winning. I almost die here actually. So he shadowy duels late, and he ends up actually killing him just in time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, peace.